that was incompatible with God. That man was killed on the cross. The reality of the fact in Christianity is we are born of the Spirit, but we are discipled by the Word. Welcome, Welcome to, to Jubilee Christian, Christian Church, Thika Road. Understand that there is a capacity that is called the nature of God that is in you. We, we preach Christ. Verse, verse 1 says, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of god praise the lord amen and amen god i mean what is i mean your body is the most valuable and greatest possession that you have because it is when we see pastor simeon in pastor simeon there is the soul and there is the spirit but all of that is contained in his body but when we look at the first verse of chapter 12 of romans Paul began to express and desire that everybody he speaks to, everybody he encounters, begins comes to the place of experiencing what he had experienced, comes to the place of experiencing the grace of God. And therefore he desires that everybody that hears him, everybody that he, that he encounters, becomes as he is and comes to know what he is. And therefore, many of the times in the scriptures, you will realize that Paul is praying for the brethren. I beseech you, that I, and he is, he is beseeching them in God. He is praying for them. He is saying, I don't cease to pray for you he is saying i commit you to god every time because i commit you to the grace of god because there is an experience he had a transformational experience that changed him from who he was to a to one who would represent Christ and display Christ. And therefore, in this place, when he's talking to the Romans, he said, I appeal to you. He uses very deep words. I, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Remember that Paul was Saul before, and he, we had, as we have seen in the book of Galatians, he was persecuting the church mercilessly. Praise God. And he was a serious killer. So long as you worshipped God, you were his enemy and you were his target. And therefore he came for you. But when he encountered the grace of God, there was, some, there was a change that happened in him. And he desired that this change happens to everybody. And therefore when he's talking to people, he talks in such a language that will convict them of the experiences that he had had with God. Praise God. And therefore he says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God. He knew that the God is merciful enough regardless of the extent that you have gone outside his grace. There is no place that the grace of God cannot reach you. And he said it is by the mercies of God that I have experienced that I am beseeching you. I know of a God who is merciful enough to reach you wherever you are. And therefore he says, I beseech you that by the mercies of of God you present your bodies praise God you present your bodies as living sacrifices as, as living sacrifices I want to read it in amplified I appeal to you therefore brethren and beg of you in the view of all the masses of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies presenting all your members and faculties a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service, rational, intelligent service, and spiritual worship. Praise God. He desires that everything about this Romans, I mean, the, this Roman church, 
everything about them is wholly dedicated to God. And Pastor, Pastor Sam said, it is the believer's business to set your mind on the things of God. And here Paul repeats that it is the, the duty, that it is, it is the work of the Christian to dedicate, like we have just sung, that we bring ourselves as a sacrifice to God. For, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glory, glorify God in your body, the Bible says, and in your spirit, which are God's. Therefore, after you have been purchased, there is nothing about you that belongs to you. You are God's. Praise God. Therefore, the Bible says, glorify God with your body and in your spirit, which have been bought with a price. Your body is the, is the carrier of the soul and the spirit. And therefore, when you present your body to God, you present the entire, your entire self to God. Meaning, what you see, what you listen, what you touch, where you go, is, it, 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 it doesn't contradict with the sacrifice that you're giving to God. So Paul says, I beseech you that you present yourself. Praise God. He was, he was talking in relation to the, to the sacrifices that were given on the law. It is the offerer of the sacrifice that took the sacrifice to the priest. And then the priest offered the sacrifice. But because there is another sacrifice that has been offered. Then has made these bodies uh whole they have made these bodies acceptable to god he re he requests the roman church to please dedicate consider themselves as a sacrifice and he tells them now you don't need me to take you to god take yourself dedicate yourself i mean present all of yourself to god present your bodies uh to god as a living sacrifice the life in the body was no longer was, is no longer ours because we have been bought with a purchase. And then he con continues to say, uh, as a living sacrifice, holy and holy, devoted, consecrated, and well pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service of spiritual worship. Praise God. As, as you present yourself to God, you we we are worshiping God. The aim of all human life in the eyes of God is to live in the will of God. That is that Christ would look as valuable as he is in the eyes of God. The Christ living in you will be seen as valuable as God sees him. Praise God. So when you present yourself, you separate yourself. And when you are in the world, the world is able to see the value of the Christ in you. Because you are devotedly and decisively given yourself to God. Worship means using our minds and our hearts and our bodies to express the worth of God in all he, and all he is in us for God. Praise God that the world may know him. That we may be able to express the image of the invisible God through the Christ who has set us free. Praise God. For all things were made by him and without him was not anything made. Meaning that we are made by Christ and for Christ and through him. He did not bring you like Pastor Sam said the other time. He did not bring you to existence and then had nothing to do with you. No. He had a purpose for you and therefore having realized this purpose Paul requests the, the, the Roman church to be to dedicate themselves to God to present themselves and wash in, in, in worship and be transformed verse, verse 2 says of Romans 12 verse, verse 2 says do not be conformed into this world don't be fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs but be transformed changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideas and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god 
Paul came to a place where after separating himself, he realized that there is a particular way that God wants him to. There is a particular way to love. There is a particular way to live. There is a present that when we present our bodies, there is a yieldedness needed so that we operate according to the will of God. And therefore he, te he, he tells us, be transformed. There is a part of God that that, that has already been completed in making us the new creation. But there is our part of staying in that state of the new creation. And this is what Paul is saying. Present these bodies that have been purchased by God. Present these spirits that have been perfected. Present them to God as as. As, as living sacrifices he made us into who we are living li so we must we must be able to present ourselves to god so much that we may be able able to live the kind of life that god intends for us to live and he says do not be conformed do not live according to the world conforming is to take a mold of something like the way they take a mold and pour clay and they wait for it to dry and they put it in the kiln and becomes a cup. The way they make soap, they mold the soap into a shape that they want to be. So he said, don't take the shape of the world. Don't be conformed to this world. Being the new creation, but, by, but adapting, don't be the new creation that you have been made into, but adapt, adapting into the fashions and the ways of the world. He says, do not conform into this world. Don't be fashioned after the world. Don't adapt into the world, but be transformed, be changed by the renewing of our minds. And that is why we gather every day here so that we can listen to the word of God. We can listen to the words of his grace that we may get, be, we, may get we may be built up in the word of God. Praise the Lord. That through the word of God, the Bible only gives us one way to be transformed, which is the word of God by the renewing of our mind. And every time we read the word of God, we come to know we come to see we, we see we see god we see the more we look at god the more we see who we are in god praise god and we come to realize who we are when our minds are continually changed ceaselessly he says be transformed by the renewing meaning the only way to get the mind transformed is by continue renewing it's not announced it's a it's a ceaseless job it's a continuous job that re, that by by renewing our mind by the word of god he reveals to us what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god the world runs very swiftly under the control of a forceful current but god has put us in that world with an ability in us he is certain that even though the world is running very swiftly under the current we will not be carried by the current because when we allow our minds when we uh present our bodies and we walk as a as a sacrifice as, as a way of worship and we allow our minds to be transformed we will begin to operate in a way that is different from the current that is operating in the world and therefore the chances are that that adapting into the customs of the world is easier praise god is easier than than than, than is easier when you are in the world but the bible says when you allow your mind to be transformed you will be able to stand and the bible in ephesians chapter 1 says we have not ephesians chapter 1 verse verse 11 says in him we have ob obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. The will of God is God's sovereign governance of all that comes to pass because there is his sovereignty in you. Praise God. And he knows your 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 ways. He the, there is a song that says he he knows my past, he knows my present and he has my future. 
Therefore, in you, the way he has formed you, the way he has made you a new creation, you are able to start because he, ha he foreordained us and predestined us and planned for us enough, not to adapt to the ways of the world, but to be adopted as his own children in accordance to the purpose of his will because it pleased him and it was his kind intent for us to be adopted to being his children now where we have read uh, Romans chapter 12 the Bible calls it do not Bible says in the amplified do not be conformed to the external customs of the world that tells me that there is another system inside of every believer. Praise God. If the Bible says, do not be conformed to ex external customs, those are outside the believer. But there is a system in, inside every believer because inside of us, the word of God has cultured us differently from the customs of the world. The customs of the world are external, but God works his grace from the inside. Praise God. And this is the grace that strengthens us. This is the grace that, 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 that gives us strength to stand the current that we have been talking about that is running the world. When we present our bodies as living sacrifices, our work ceases and the work of grace begins to work against the external customs, helping us not to ad adapt to the systems of the world, but stay adopted as sons of God. Praise God. So you, Paul uses these very passionate words, beseeching us, that we, by the masses of God, we present our own bodies. The Bible says the body is the Lord's and the Lord for the body. We have become the temples of God. So as we present it, we are presenting it for God to be able. We are yielding to God. Praise God. We are giving ourselves to God. When we present our bodies as living sacrifices and we worship, we allow our minds to be transformed. Then we begin to access the help that is within us. Praise God. That is our anti the external customs of the world. Praise God. Usually, uh, when when men say, when men say, let the will of God be done, usually men say it in a way of uh, of in a giving up mood. Praise God. As in, they have tried, they have tried to use their intellect and their strength and their influence, and they have actually borrowed affluence. And it has not worked. And at that point, you hear people saying, let the will of God be done. But even if you look at their, at their, at their body language, their body language contradicts their, their words. Praise God. Because when they are saying, let your will be done, they are going like, let your will be done. Praise God. It, they're not in the, they don't have the confidence that there is a power working in them that that is able to transform the situations that they are addressing. Praise God. At this state, usually uh, men say that when, when they have encountered a situation that is not responding to them per se. So they say so in a defeated mood like I had said before. And when the results are negative, praise God. See, they have just said, let your will be done. But they have said, but, but they stay. They are not involved, they are not participating, and they, they are not, I actually wonder who they are talking to, because they are not addressing God. Praise God. Because if they were addressing God, they would have come to a place of uh, intimacy with him, and they would have had him say something about the will of God concerning their lives so when you hear people saying let your will be done they are actually not addressing god here when they say let your will be done they they are absent in that will they don't present their bodies as in let your will be done but i am not there so when the results come they are negative what do they do they start blaming god Hallelujah. They start blaming God, but it is not God they were addressing and they were not present. They had not presented themselves to God 
so that God can work through and in them to bring his will to pass. Hallelujah. Here, they are not allowing their mind to be transformed and to be renewed in the state that is receptive to the help of God that is within them. Praise God. It is usually a state of a state where they are focusing more on the situation and on the physical things that they can see, but they are not focusing on the grace of God that has been availed for us to help us in time of need. And the Bible says, come boldly therefore to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and grace in times of, of need. That particular time of need, instead of turning to the throne of grace and depending on the grace of God, they just say, let your will be done. Like they are talking to a person who is in another section and they are in this section locked up with their situations. And when the negative uh, results happen, they start saying, it is God. Praise God. Let me give you an example. God has, God create, God gave us this person and God has taken away. It is not God. Praise God. The will of God is for us to live. Hallelujah. But when we surrender ourselves, we lay a good foundation for worship. Why? Because we have surrendered our mind. We have surrendered our souls. We have surrendered our spirit to God. And we have surrendered the whole of ourselves to God. So as we lift up our worship, we are not lifting a divided worship. When we lift up our worship, when we have presented our bodies as, as living sacrifice, we lift up a complete worship. And now as we begin begin to worship you present a complete sacrifice praise god because your mind okay your soul and your spirit and your body are together given as a sacrifice to god when you're worshiping you give a complete sacrifice praise god and the grace inside of inside of you begins to get a way to work in you for it is for, for the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory will himself perfect and confirm and strengthen and establish you. The child of God begins to move against the customs of the world in this state where the grace of God is at work. But it is only after we have presented ourselves, our bodies as living sacrifices and we are worshipping and giving a complete sacrifice to God. And we have allowed the word of God to transform our minds in this state where the grace of god is at work he energizes the inner man and he is able to pray the the, the believer is enabled is is able to speak according to the what he hears the spirit say because he is not divided at this state but he has presented himself fully to god that is why we say the grace of god is sufficient because when we get into a situation which is difficult and our our, our strength is challenged and our intellect is challenged we turn to the grace of god we we present ourselves to god and he is able to work within us and that is why we say the grace of God is su su sufficient and, and it works against the superficial customs that are, are, are barring us from becoming everything that God wants us to become and that is in his will. The grace wherein we stand is stable, immovable and shakeable permanent therefore the results of the of grace in our lives do not form a cycle but they are permanently progressive praise god when we dedicate and release ourselves to the working of grace in our lives we do not go a cycle like we are like we are in the old nature but the nature of the new creation is permanent is more is progressive and it is permanent praise god grace is an experience and in and every child of god should operate in the grace of god so as to be able to walk in the perfect and the good and acceptable will of god that he may be able to grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced in might and this is the work of the work of grace to reinforce the reinforce the inner man so that you may be able to write to stand against the current that is that, that the world is running under that you will not be moved because as we have seen earlier the grace wherein we stand is as stable as christ himself praise god because grace is christ 
Praise God. He is stable. He is immovable. And that is why we call him unchangeable. Praise God. So when we have the certainty that we are standing in Christ and he is at work within us, we know that the results are progressive and they are permanent in Jesus' name because the mighty power that is working in, within us is not muscle power but the spirit power. Praise the Lord. Amen. So grace is the reinforcement that we need to withstand the current that is in the world. We have seen that. And the mighty power is not uh, of our own, but of the spirit. This is why we have to present our bodies to him as living sacrifices. This reinforcement is enough to carry you through anything. Praise God. This mighty power is sufficient and able to withstand any other. And therefore, it is by faith that we access grace. And it is by grace that we access, we are able to know the perfect will of God concerning our lives. There is a level of love that you cannot express by yourself. Praise God. There is a level of power that you cannot release by yourself until we present ourselves, until we allow the work of grace to be at work, I, I mean to function in our lives, until we release ourselves to the working of grace. That is when the power that, that raised Jesus from the dead begins to work from within us and is able to turn around situations that we are limited to attend to, praise God, and is able to make us stably, uh, stand uh, and shake unshakably stand in the current of the, the in the currents that are moving that the world is moving under and though we are in the world this is this this power this power of his grace is what causes us to stand in the name of Jesus when you are you are yielded when we are yielded and we have allowed ourselves to be transformed by the word of God. Our language changes and we begin to speak the will of God and that is what we have been doing in this church. We have been proclaiming the word of God. We have been confessing about, I mean we have been confessing the word of God concerning our lives and therefore the fashion of the, of the word dictates that after a certain age the bodies begin to function at a certain way. But when the same bodies are presented to God as living sacrifices, we begin to function at, in, a, in a way that, that baffles the world because they cannot understand why we are performing the way we are performing. But it's because we have presented ourselves to God. We have allowed the word of God to transform our minds. We have allowed the spirit of God to work in within us. And when we present our bodies, to, there is nothing that is able to stand the power of grace that is at work in our lives. Therefore, in, sh uh, in short form, the grace of God is the help of man. Praise God. The grace of God is the help of man. The, the, the fashion of the world dictates that this family can only rise this far. This person can only go this far. But when you present your, the Bible where we had read, we had read said that you present all your faculties to God as living sacrifices. Meaning as you think, you are not thinking about your own things, but you are thinking of the things that are above where you are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. When you are stretching your hands, you're not releasing the power of your own, but you are releasing the power of the grace that is at work within you. And that is why when you lay your hands on a person, they get healed. They, when you walk in a place, you carry an atmosphere that is heavenly because you have, you have dedicated yourself. You have, uh, presented yourself to God and your, your, your entire self is ruled by the grace of God. Praise God. Then therefore, when the work of grace is ongoing, is ongoing, the, is ongoing, the words of his grace resonate in our spirit and the, and they become louder than the voices of the world praise god and because we are fully dedicated and we it's a decision that we have made to to separate ourselves and to present ourselves to god when the words of grace uh, resonate from our spirit 
it is then that we are able to understand what to do. That even when the world is operating in a certain way, there is a voice that is louder than that voice, but the voices in the world. And when we focus on the spirit, when we focus on God, when we focus on the working of grace within us, we are able to hear direction. We are able to see where God is taking us. We are able to hear, we are able to see, and he is able to reveal to us what is the perfect and the good and the acceptable will he has for us in, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the more we yield to him, the more intimate we get. And the more intimate we get, the, the, the more he reveals about himself. The more he reveals about himself, the clearer we are able to see our lives. And the clearer we see ourselves, the more we are able to stand because we have confidence and we are convicted of who we are. Because it is not something we have heard from the world, but it is a conviction that is coming from the Spirit, telling us who we are in Christ Jesus, telling us what we can do in the Lord, what telling us what what he expects us to do and what is his plan for us. This grace is the counsel of the will of God. Praise God. Because when we allow him to work within us, he is able to reveal to us the intentions and the purposes of God. The counsel of the Lord stands forever and the plans of his heart from generation to generation. So the counsel of the Lord, it is the direction of the Lord from the spirit. It is the instruction of the Lord from the Spirit. Therefore, it is the grace of God that helps us. In this state of the transformed mind, then we are able to identify, meaning there are things that you do, we do, or people do in the world. They are nice when they are being done, but they are not good to God. Praise God. Those things that, that people do are not acceptable to God. So how are you supposed to differentiate what God what is happening everywhere and what is common to what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God? It's by listening to the work of grace that is endlessly going on in every believer's spirit in the name of Jesus. God never meant his intentions to be a mystery. Praise God. He never meant his, his intentions and purposes for us to be a mystery. He says, come, come and I will give you I will give you, you will obtain mercy and find the grace to help you in time of need. Therefore, as it is, it, the, it, the Bible is giving us the same message, both from God and from us. Praise God. Because it's, the Bible says, come boldly. Praise the Lord. And when Paul is talking, he says, present your bodies. Praise God. It is our work. It is our responsibility to present our bodies to God. In every seemingly difficult situation, God offers his grace to help us, praise the God, to every yielded believer. And the depths of the mind of God concerning you, concerning your business, if you're ever going to make a powerful deal in the marketplace, you, we have got to get to a place where we are, pre, we have, we are fully presented holy, and every faculty of ourselves is presented to God so that he does through us and through our businesses what he ever intended for businesses to look like. Praise God. Because in the mind of God, there is a way he, he finds he intended for your business to look. So grace enabled, enables us to, to do his will. And when we do his will, we are established in a firm foundation. Praise the Lord. When we are established in a firm foundation, we are able to live in the world according to the way he wanted us to live in the world. According, We are able to, to, to do what we saw in the beginning as we began to talk. We are able to stand the current of the world because inside of us we have an enabler inside of us we have we have an enabler we have help because in him we the bible says in him we have redemption the deliverance of salvation through his blood the remission the forgiveness of our offenses which he verse 8 says which he lavished upon us 
in every kind of wisdom and understanding and practical insight and pr prudence, making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will. What the world doesn't understand is not a secret to us when we are in Christ Jesus. Oh, praise God. When we have submitted ourselves to God, it's no longer a secret. It is it is revealed because the Bible says he has made known to us the mystery of his will. So the, his will is not a puzzle. Praise God. His will for you is not a puzzle. All we need to do is to present the whole of ourselves to him. Is to rededicate ourselves to him. Is to, is to be to allow ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we may be able to understand the purpose that he has for us in accordance to his good pleasure, his merciful intention and which he had previously purposed and set forth in him. Praise God. Therefore, every life of a believer cannot be complete outside Christ. Praise God. Cannot be complete outside the grace of God. If you are to achieve all that what God has called you to achieve. If you are, able, if you are to go where God has called you to go. It has, we have got to get to a place of being totally dependent on the work of grace in his life. Because it is then that he reveals his will for us. It shows us when we are transformed by his word we are able to prove praise god the bible says where we we began to read in romans 12 chapter 2 i mean romans 12 verse 2 give us romans 12 verse 2 kindly uh the bible says do not be conformed to this world do not be fashioned after and adapted to its extent superficial customs but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and in its new attitude so that you may be able to prove praise god meaning there is a contradiction praise god but for you to be able to identify and prove not for another person, but for ourselves. What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? We have to get to a place of allowing the word of God to change us completely. In a way that we believe what he says is, is true. That in that way we are able to stand and prove. We are able to ascertain. We are able to establish the truth about our lives we are able to uh, substantiate about our babies in school yeah, well, they might be in school but when you are you when you have allowed the word of god to transform you you are able to distinguish for yourself what is the good will what is the perfect will what is the acceptable will of god meaning that it is not it is not it it is not God has provided his grace for a purpose. Praise God. Because we need him to help us. We need his help. Then the things and the situations and the ways of living as the spiritual being on earth, the ways, the, the ways of living as a spiritual being that you are on earth is in the grace of God. Praise God. So uh, if we are to achieve anything, if we are to become anything that is that is in the will of God, we have to get to a place where we are so instructed by the word of God that we can prove, praise God, that we can prove that this is the truth about me. This is the truth about my business. Concern, according to the word of God, this is the truth. And and in the beginning, we began by saying that Paul kept on praying. Paul kept on admonishing. And I want us to look at the book of Colossians chapter 1 as we finish. As I wind up, I want us to look at the book of Colossians chapter 1. And verse 9, the Bible says, For this reason, we also, from the day we heard of it, we, we have not ceased to pray. Pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with the full and deep clear knowledge of his will 
in all spiritual wisdom, in comprehensive insight into his ways and purposes of God, and in the understanding and discernment of spiritual things, that you may be able to walk and live and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steady growing and increasing and in and by the knowledge of God. Praise God. This knowledge is not acquired by any other form. The Bible says, by your mind, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is in the, will, in the word of God where we get to understand the will of God, where we are filled with deep and clear knowledge of the will of God concerning our lives. There is a place where you get to know the the desire of God and the intention of God over your life that you are able to prove it through the word of God that you have that you have allowed to transform your mind that you have allowed yourself to be subject to and the bible says paul praying he says i pray that i don't cease to pray for you that you may be filled with the full deep and clear knowledge of the will of God in spiritual wisdom because the, the the wisdom of the world will not work in us because as we had seen before there is a system that works in the world but there is an internal system that works in every child of god and that is called the work of grace it is called the spirit of god at work who is working inside of us and as we listen to him as we yield to him as we devotedly devote ourselves him he is able to teach us he is able to instruct us he is able to clearly reveal the will of god about our lives to us and as we live this world as we live our lives as we live in the world though we are not of the world though we have been recreated and regenerated into the new creation we are able to stand the forces of the and, and that is why the bible says i pray that you may be reinforced in the inner man because when you have that that force in the inner man the force of the spirit the power of the spirit inside of you you'll be able to move against every contradiction you will be able to to stand against every billowing weed in the world in the name of Jesus and and shortly uh, just before we wind up I, I want us to to stand and begin to pray that we may be able to to get to baby feet we I know we are filled with Christ but there is a place you get where you are able your mind is so transformed until what you know you can stand for it what you know you can stand against contradiction uh, and when Paul was praying he was praying because he had had this experience by himself and he knew there was a place there was a there was a level you get where you know with such certainty that beyond any reason it doesn't matter what happens in the world you will stand praise god this is jubilee christian church thicker road agenda of me being crucified with Christ was to eradicate that old person that was incompatible with God that man was killed on the cross the reality of the fact in Christianity is we are born of the spirit but we are discipled by the word welcome to Jubilee Christian Church Thicker Road understand that there is a capacity that is called the nature of God that is in you. We preach Christ.